great. So welcome to another network-centric resources online discussion featuring resource developers sharing hard-earned knowledge and lessons learned, lessons learned. So I'm your host, Dirk Slater. I am the fab writer in Fab Writers. Um, we work to build capacity to use tech and data to strengthen advocacy and humanitarian efforts. Our network-centric resources project aims to learn from those that are developing people-powered and participatory content by examining methodologies for sharing ownership, enabling contribution, and supporting collaboration. Our past online discussions have focused on developing content with and for communities and networks, such as Soraya Akuda and EFF's Security Education Companion, and Heather Leeson with IFRC's Data Playbook. Um, we've also looked at collaboration tools like the one we did with Adam Hyde uh, about floss manuals and editoria. This time, we're looking at the network-centric resource as an event that brings people together to contribute and collaborate. So joining me today is Sarah Allen, the MozFest or the Mozilla Festival Executive Director. Hello, how are you doing today, Sarah? I'm really good. Thank you for inviting me on the call. Oh, so I'm so excited you're here. So um, to start us off, probably the best place to start for everyone is to describe what MozFest is. Mm, an easy one to start us off here today. Um, yeah, so MozFest is a seven-day festival that takes place in London in the UK. It is 10 years old this year, so we are about to start designing a festival that's going to be entering its teenage years and all the trouble that that brings with it. Um, it is also a platform for the network, for our community to come and share, collaborate and design together. MozFest is we always say MozFest is not about Mozilla, but it's about the people that come to participate and the people that come to attend the event. Um, I said it is seven days, and so we just expanded the festival from a weekend event just two years ago, um, and we started with a second venue in central London called MozFest House. And MozFest House um, allows where is where we invite our friends, our allies, our partners to come in and run events um, in in the venue and um, but have them as events that are for a particular topic for a defined audience and so if you were an attendee to MozFest House you would sign up for an individual event you could sign up for all 33 if you want but it would be a very busy five days for you and um, but you will come and hang out and you know get to know the audience that they're the, the, the beauty of the house is that it is very much for a particular audience coming with a very set skill set and um, to come and collaborate in this space or you know to listen to a talk or a social and um, MozFest weekend is the exact opposite and um, it is a open loud busy weekend held in Ravensbourne College um, in Greenwich and um, at the start of the summer, people submit sessions um, and a group of uh, wranglers choose the sessions and these take place over the weekend. So at any one point part, any one point of the weekend, there's probably about 32 sessions taking place. And so over Saturday and Sunday, we have about 320 um, sessions, workshops, installations, talks um, that take place across the weekend. So there's something, we aim to have something for everyone. And so when we say something for everyone, we kind of, we aim to have, you know, to have discussions and collaborative workshops for people of different abilities and interests and disciplines and backgrounds. We want to cater for um, all ages. We have a youth zone where young people come and design and build and lead their own sessions. Very proud that we once had an eight-year-old lead a session and do a talk, um, always in awe of um, our young leaders. Um, and then we have the rest of the weekend is kind of, your, it's designed so you can, move around the event the way that you want to you you cannot go to everything you know at 30 sessions an hour and you are not able to divide yourself up that many ways but it's a, it's kind of like a design your own journey and so we give you opportunities to maybe choose a, um, a subject that you're really into maybe around you know open science and open data and go to sessions there but then we'll also challenge you around and encourage you to go to maybe something around journalism or the idea of like digital equity online. You know, there are sessions that are kind of held as talks or participatory element where a facilitator will bring a problem to you, the participant, and you have the opportunity to collaborate and bring your ideas to the table. 
there will be installations in the galleries around the place and so that's an opportunity for you to have a one-on-one -on -one connection with a piece of work and so it could be a digital artwork or it could be an audio piece or it could be a wall where we ask you to submit your answers on post-its and then we also have like a dialogue and debate space where you can go and sit and just listen to someone talk about um, uh, open data practices in South Africa or talk about um, AI worries that are coming through um, from in, in the US right now. And so it is a wonderful, busy, loud um, weekend or seven days. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy working with the really great team that help design yeah. and build it. I'd have to say it's incredibly addictive um, going <laughs> to Moss Fest. Um, so, and, and just to also for the, just to, to give a frame on this for the sake of, of the next hour, I think what we, re, we particularly want to focus on is the weekend. Yes. Um, because that is the, I, I mean, and, and I think also just because I've been promoting this as the sort of like, how do you get 2,000 people uh, it, together in a building and collaborate um, with each other? Um, and uh, it, it, I mean, it's an incredible amount of work that goes into having this sort of free flowing space. So I think it's probably be super helpful for people um, to get that understanding about how, how do we organize this and how do we enable um, contribution and, and collaboration between the 2000 people that come to, to MozFest. Sure, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's a lot of work, but I can see a lot of people here also work in events or kind of meetups, so you can understand that what goes into these kind of events. But it's not just me. Um, it is, it's, you know, it really is the 2,000 people that come to the event. Um, we, we, MozFest is designed around the idea that everyone who participates holds part of the the design, the delivery, and the execution of the event. Um, the year will start with um, myself looking for a group, seeking out a group of collaborators, um, or what we call wranglers, um, people who will help design what the narrative and what the, the festival will be about this year. And we hold that always in um, maybe about May. We call it the Moz Retreat. We bring together these brave souls who are ready to basically volunteer six months of their time um, to help design this festival. And so, you know, we, I, MozFest is, you know, it is about keeping the web open, free and a resource for all. And there's definitely a lot of challenges that we face right now online. And, you know, some of those, there's a lot of challenges, but as Mozilla, we focus in around kind of a set of issues that we see the web facing. Um, and so I bring these issues to the retreat um, and I share these issues with the Wranglers, but it's the last time that I hold the storytelling of what the event will be around this year. And so, you know, I present the issues to these, this group of wranglers who come from like a, a, all across the globe of various age, um, age ranges, abilities and um, disciplines. Um, and I kind of say to them, you know, what, is, what are the challenges you face with these issues that we see happening online? But also, what is, what is happening for you, your community, your work online today? What are we not talking about? What needs to be in a public sphere? What do we need to share and collaborate to kind of make inroads on? And so that, that invitation to the retreat and that opening kind of piece and that asking those questions is really, is, we're kind of handing the festival over to these wranglers. We're kind of saying, okay, now what are we going to do um, for the festival this year? And so these, this group of wranglers, they are the people that set the narrative and that becomes the open call. And the open call is a, an open call for proposal submission process that runs from June to August and people submit a myriad of ideas. Last year we were really lucky to just have under 900 sessions submitted and people will submit under this open call and especially we'll, we'll see kind of ways for them to participate as part of this call and, and part of the narrative of the festival. And these wranglers choose these sessions. They, they, they have that really impossible job of narrowing it down to just about just under 300 sessions. And then it's about asking these facilitators, will you join us on this journey? Will you help us design this event in, in October? Um, and, and finding different ways for people to be able to participate and ways for them to collaborate with us. And so the journey and the team, you know, the journey is shorter, it's now September, but the team is much bigger. Um, and so suddenly we've gone from 
the Mranglers, or the retreat, maybe about 50 of us. Now we have, sometimes we have about 700 people now on the team that's designing MozFest. And so it becomes a much bigger, bigger um, piece of work. But the idea is that we're all supporting each other. And, you know, Dirk plays a major role in this as um, a lot of, um, oh, I work with a team, um, a great team, Open Leadership and Events, and they play a role. And, and the Wranglers, and we, and we seek to, you know, turn to our facilitators and say, you know, how can we help you, support you, give you the support construct for you to lead your session at MozFest? And their session is only going to be one hour. But that one hour is a chapter in a book, and that book is MozFest. And so we want to make sure that they feel supported and are ready to lead that participatory session because it's really important that we are asking people. We're not telling people what's happening, but we're, we're sharing and we're seeking collaboration in every step of this way. And so we are kind of setting up the support constructs for those um, facilitators. So when they arrive at the weekend... Oh, sorry, go on. No, sorry. So I think... Like, I want to get a little bit more into that process, but I think one piece that's really critical for people to understand and getting at um, Julian's uh, uh, lovely questions here about how do you keep an overarching frame and narrative and, and how do the o overarching narrative inform the individual learning journey, journeys. So what, what you know, you've noted for the, the 2000, the, the participant that comes, they're, they're choosing their own journey. One of the ways that it's helpful for people to be able to um, get the narrative, understand how to connect to this is the idea of spaces, right? Yes. But and I think that's super important. So let's get into what spaces are and how the yeah. Wranglers organize yeah. around that. So, you know, those spaces, those issues that I spoke about earlier on get translated into what traditionally are called in other events tracks, so a kind of a, a defined hub, but we call them spaces in MozFest. You'll learn we've got our kind of own language going on with this event. But so, but what the narrative is around those issues, you know, was designed by the Wranglers. And the submissions that are proposed within those spaces are responses from the community to that narrative. And so you know, when, you know, people support what they create, Neil just added, and that is very true because the Wranglers have created the spaces and now the facilitators are in charge of sharing that story of what that space is and what that space means and what is happening in that narrative to them on a local level. Um, and so there is this kind of continuous design iteration where we seek to continue to like find the personal response to what we're sharing. And we're always asking people like, what is it that is matters to you around digital inclusion? What is happening to you in your community? What are those kind of issues or what are those areas that you're championing and bring those responses? It's, you know, the idea is that we're all kind of, again, kind of sharing these like life experiences and this, this, this work um, that comes from a local level, but really on a global stage because the, pe the facilitators are coming from different disciplines and different areas of the world, as are their participants. And so that story then gets enriched even more when we bring our participants into this kind of equation at the festival weekend. So the facilitators then at the MozFest weekend are holding the story of the event. If you were to go to every single session, it would give you a really good overview of what is happening on the web, what, what matters, what are those um, projects and resources and tools that are taking place right now. But it's then, the idea is that the participants, the attendees arrive and they're responding to that story. They're responding to those sessions and adding their own kind of spin, their own take and bringing their own work in there. Because the MozFest doesn't end on the Saturday, Sunday night. We, you know, we always say that the, the schedule is never fully confirmed until nine o'clock when everybody's leaving the building. But the work doesn't end on Sunday night because you know, our attendees come in to work with our facilitators and they started then their own journey because the work that, they take, that takes place in that session continues on after the event and continues on in their own kind of communities. Yes, and also, um, yeah, so, and, and, and also true, Neil, yes, everything, a lot continues to happen um, on between events. And mm -hmm. one of the things is, is making sure that facilitators, but also participants know that, right? Like they are coming and, and, and having this moment where everything is coming together and they're getting exposed to something or the facilitator is exposing them to something but it isn't about a sort of one-off. It is about, and, and particularly like anyone walking, the hope at MozFest, right? For anyone walking into it to be walking away with a network, mm -hmm. right? 
Like you have this incredible moment where you've got all these people coming together around this varying degree of, of topics, right? And this opportunity to connect and learn from one another and then make those valuable things and walk away. For the facilitators, obviously, you know, the hope is their projects move forward, but also that participants are coming and maybe sparking other projects and other ideas that might, you know, they might be coming back with next year, right? Yeah, I think there's, you know, a lot of great work takes place in the sessions, but a lot of work that lasts and has longevity is the conversations that take place around the sessions. So by bringing all these different people together, you're giving them the opportunity to collaborate and to see something magical that they can take on themselves, that they take ownership and they can develop beyond the event. Because the event is just that platform. It's that moment in time. It's just a, a moment in the arc of the work of the year. It shouldn't be seen as a start or an end of anything, but just seen as like a way to facilitate continued learning and connections and collaborations. And so, yeah, so there's that, that is the kind of really special piece of, you know, it's at, for this moment in October, all these people are facing at looking at each other and looking at, and actively seeking new relationships, partnerships and projects and to bring what they, their knowledge to the equation. And that's kind of the mod, part of the magic of MozFest is then they all kind of start rolling up their sleeves and working together and that the work does not end on the Sunday because they bring those relationships, those contacts, those new networks and what they've learned back to where their communities and their own work. And so, I, I mean, what the bit that's, that's really sort of untraditional about MozFest is, you know, often you're, you're doing a, a, a conference or, um, you know, a big, there's a big convening of people um, but the what's happening is is that there's a lot of panels and presentations, yes. um, and about it. And this is a very different way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. So from the very beginning, you know, and it comes from the very first moment that I work with the Randers is that the idea is that you know we are here to design and build together, and for you know it's. You know, I might have done many MozFests, but I don't come in here holding the answer and the solution of what the festival is going to look like for this year. And so we're very intentional with our open call where we're asking people, what is it that you want the participants to get from your session? How will your participants engage in your session? And then we're asking them, what work, what do you imagine, how will this work live on beyond your session? So straight away, we're taking, we're saying, you know, don't over plan for what you want to tell but come with come with an idea come with a question come with um, a project that you want this the audience and the participants to respond to to enact with to build with you because the power is there of having all these people to be able to design together so we really enforce no slide decks it's really really important and so um we want you know we want people sitting around and talking to each other rather than sitting and staring at a screen and you know just having to listen to one person talk for so long and so um that's important in the kind of when we're designing the sessions and so then we also work you know dirk spends a lot of time working with our facilitators and like some people do you know this kind of work comes very easily to them and they have work, you know, set up open participatory sessions before, but other people, this is the first time they're hearing about it or, you know, they have might've been on the, the kind of conference scene for a long time and they just do a kind of a quick shuffle and remix and share the same thing all the time. And it's about breaking that down. And so we want to work with people and kind of tease out those areas where you are going to the session knowing that the value is in how people respond to your work, not your work how people are gonna take your work to the next level, not how you're telling them how great you are at doing your work. You know, it's that always looking to like deepen collaborations and further the learning. And um, it's, you know, about walking into the room knowing that, you know, you're not gonna be the one to be able to provide the solution, but the solution comes with you all together. And I have to say like, and I was uh, um, uh, having a conversation uh, with a facilitator about what she got out of MozFest and she was saying how it's not about selling it yeah. is about it is about coming to get inputs right and making sure that that you are having those people give it to you and and all that sort of thing and I have to say one of the things like the the first I, I remember the the thing that really got me my first MozFest and I have to say if you haven't been it's an incredible you know, experience but the thing that you know that bit that you were describing before about like you know you're you're having conversations 
outside the sessions and then you're having conversations inside the sessions. And it's one of these things that like, it's all about those conversations that you're having all the way through, which is what is overwhelming. Cause often you are going to a conference where you have conversations in between on the break, yeah. but then you're not during, right. And you're just sitting there being, uh, um, uh, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're, you're just taking you're, not, you're yeah, in, but you're not processing it. And you're I not think. processing and you're not contributing. Yeah. And, and, and by having, yeah, sorry. So, sorry. No, <laughs> I mean, I just have that thing of like, so in this day and age, like what I, I mean, obviously MozFest is about the internet, right? Yeah. In this day and age though, what the, what MozFest, what the internet can do for everyone is give a platform for broadcasting. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I want to tell you about my project, right, I can do that on the internet. I don't have to fly 2000 people or I don't have to get 2000 people convened in the same place. Right. But if I want to engage people, I've, that's when you have to bring people together. And I'm so like, you know, why do people fly people thousands of miles to come to a place and then just project at them? Right. Yeah. So anyways, I'm, you know, that's the thing for me. It's like, oh, the whole time you are just engaged. Yeah, I think, and so, you know, you know, MozFest is part of Mozilla. So Mozilla's like mission is about keeping the web open, free and a resource. And so as a resource, it must be applicable to everybody that's using it. You know, it must be a way for people to participate, for a way people to um, share and to like um, feed, give feedback. And, and that's really important at the festival that there's different ways that people can, um, participate in conversations in sessions and so that's why we really work on you know gallery pieces where there's one-to-one -one, you know whether it's putting a pin on a board sharing what your opinion is voting in a box or going to listen to like an artist talk about their work or indeed you know we had an embroidery session at MozFest and people were able to embroidery what data made to them means to them and so it's the different ways to participate so that everybody feels like there's a way in you know we do have a lot of leaders of in their fields at MozFest. But we also have people, and we re actively seek out people who are just you know, working really hard and have got new innovative ideas and are working really hard to bring other people into those, into those ideas in that work. Yeah, and, and, and it also the, I mean, one thing that's really special about it and the thing that you know, I think often for facilitators that are there for the first time that they often don't get is how diverse a space it is. Right, like how they're, you know, you've got, like you said, you have an eight year old running a session. There's really young kids. There's old people too, um, and everything in between. And then also like this year we had the, the queering MozFest space, right? Um, so you've got all these different elements and all these different types of people that are coming together. And, you know, the other magic of it is like, you never know who's gonna be coming to your session, right? And yeah. what that group is, but that gives you like so much open opportunity in terms of like you're not sure what the makeup of your session is actually going to be looking like and it's the power that's going to be brought to your session it's like you know having a developer sit down with an artist sit down with a journalist everyone's bringing their different perspectives and that's what's really going to help diversify the outcome yeah and also also i'm just noticing matt sorry i, I see that you are are going to probably be jumping off fairly shortly if you you haven't already but I think, um, so get, getting at this piece of the federated yeah. piece of this, right? So uh, you like one, again, in terms of the organizing, there's the core team, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, uh, how many people are, are, would you say now are, are part of the like core team, which is you, Mark, um, uh, Stephanie doing the designing, like what does that look like, our, our core team? Um, it kind of depends on the time of the year, but there's, you know, there's a lot of people that play a role. So, you know, people helping design the dialogue and debates and, you know, people who are part of the production team because, you know, it is a large event. We need a venue. We need food. The coffee must be flowing. And so there's people involved in all those areas. And so I always talk about the core production team is probably about, um, probably about seven or eight of us. Um, but 
you know, and they're the people that are in charge of the frame of the weekend. So, you know, you know, making sure the website's up and running, that people have a place to participate. But then, you know, the frame is the only, it holds the heart of the festival and the heart is the program. And the program is being designed by the Wranglers and then held by the facilitators over the weekend. So, you know, I'm, you know, MOSFET is run by 2,000 people. <laughs> um, and so it really is everybody plays a part in that. Everyone plays a role. And I think another facet around this federated design piece that maybe we don't spend, an, I didn't spend enough time talking about is like that idea of like, yes, the conversations and the collaborations continue on, but you know, there's the reflection period afterwards and it's the feedback area where we take on board what people have said, you know, where they think we should, you know, make changes, where things maybe were a bit uncomfortable, where we can do better, we're always striving to do better. MOSFEST is never perfect, but it's always a little bit of an experiment. It's consistently evolving because we're taking on board and we're making changes every year to be better as a platform for people and for what they do. And so part of the, that feedback piece is people love to tell you where they want you to make changes. And a lot of it is really, you know, really like great feedback. And so instead of all so I try to say, yes, thank you very much for your feedback. We will ensure to make that change. I try to switch it and say, great, how will we make that change together? How can you be involved in the design to make this better next year? And that means then, you know, the kind of responsibility and then the coordination is, is shared. You know, people are invested, you know, because they're partaking, they're giving you know, they're investing because they want MOSFEST to succeed. They want it to be better, but they also are invested because they're part of the design and the delivery of it. Right. And I think, um, and, and, and also within that, it's the understanding, um, it's, it's the leveling, right? In yeah. terms of, you know, there, there, there's the core team, there's yeah. the wranglers, there's the facilitators, there, there's the participants. So many different ways it's been. Oh my God. Ways and for people feel invited in. So whether it is just an invitation to, oh, is my internet gone? It just faded there, just as you were like, <laughs> you're now back. Yeah. But it's just basically, you were just starting to riff off my. And so I think that's a really good reminder is like, MozFest, we always ask people to come with a plan A and a plan B in case your Wi-Fi goes down. What are you going to do? Turn away from the screen and have more conversations, get those post-its out. And and also just to note, so, um, you know, that what I was saying, like the leveling, yeah, like there is not really a hierarchy that happens at MozFest. Like every, when, when it is happening, everyone's contribution is equally important. Uh, yeah, big, you know, as Moz, you know, it's very important. No one is a VIP, you know, there's no backstage for our speakers. You know, Tim Bernard-Lee was pulling up a chair on the floor and arriving to sessions just like everybody else because everybody is partic participating and everybody is like designing. Everyone plays a role in the weekend. And so, you know, we are ex consistently grateful and appreciative of people coming and sharing their work and giving us the time and coming to the weekend and bringing their friends and bringing their coworkers. And so we want to make sure that the festival remains as accessible as possible, but also in the light and representative of the people that are helping us design it and participating in it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So we're like, we're um, working with, we're, we're trying to remind facilitators too, that like, it's not just about coming and doing your session. It's also about going to other people's sessions. No, a hundred percent. And, and, right? and making them understand that, you know, their sessions are all interwoven, you know, not to just kind of arrive up for their hour and then disappear. We ask facilitators to spend the entire weekend with us. We set up a Friday training so they can get to know each other and kind of learn more about the festival and why we designed it in a federated way. But that they carry, you know, they carry that, they carry the festival, but they also carry that kind of, that welcome and those pathways for people to participate who are attendees, who might be the very first time coming to this event. They are kind of the keepers of the event as well over the weekend and very much the public face. And so they, you know, having them part of the design and having them understand that each of the sessions lead into a bigger piece, as I said, chapters of a book is really important. So let me just, um, while we're on this, I'm just gonna address um, Julian's and Niels, I'm going to get to you. I, yeah, I have a very important thing about your question, but J Julian, so your your thing about how and when do participants 
uh, share what brings them to the dif different individual sessions and to facilitate it in the sessions, ask about that. Um, one of the things that we do in terms of, of helping people, um, uh, giving them um, ideas about their session design, we actually tell them what they should do at the beginning of each session is do a really fast go round because they have an hour. So we ask them just to take a few minutes and ask each, par each participant to say when they come one sentence, just one sentence on why they came. Um, and one of the things that's really critical to get facilitators um, to understand is that they, they need to be thinking a little on their feet. Um, they might hear something within that go round that makes them understand that they, the people in front of them are not the people that they imagine and they need to shift gears. And so we do actually do a lot of work in helping facilitators understand that, but that piece is really critical. Did you have anything? You wanted no, to I think that's a, that's a really great share. Yes. Yeah. And so um, uh, uh, um, uh, Neil, Neil's question, what plans exist to have MozFest come to other cities and how can I help bring MozFest come to SF Bay Area? Um, so we do help and facilitate fringe events that take place across the globe in the kind of months that lead in and out of MozFest. And so the idea is that if you're running an event that's like designed in the same ethos as MozFest around federate design, open and collaborative, we will put it on the website so people can ensure to connect and um, who also can't participate in the London event, but can connect it once more broadly. We are looking also at, you know, what would it be like for MozFest if we were to change locations? Like London has become harder for us to bring travelers in with visas and, you know, what it, where would we go? How, you know, where, how would that inflict in the design if we change the location of, of MozFest? We've done some MozFests like with um, others in like East Africa and we had one in, in Kenya. And I think um, we've also had some like elements of MozFest show up in some great um, festivals in India and in Taipei. And so one of the great things about MozFest that, you know, we tend to reach out to other festivals and say, you know, <laughs> how's your call for proposals going? Are you doing it better? Can we learn from you? You know, and sharing kind of like our practices and sharing their practices. And so a lot of these great kind of cross collaborations show up in other events across the globe. That's pretty awesome. And, and also just to say, so um, if for SF Bay Area, uh, Neil, NPDEV, which I know you know well of, yeah, so is very much part of the Mo, uh, MozFest DNA. Um, so, you know, just for anyone else that doesn't know, Aspiration and Gunner are uh, elements of MozFest and they have, have become part of the DNA of MozFest. They have a yearly event in San Francisco called the Nonprofit Developer Summit, which if you uh, had been to MozFest and you would walk into NPDEV, it would seem like very familiar territory and vice, vice versa. So I think that's another way to this, um, this design element, right? It, about what makes MozFest special is not proprietary, right? It is an open source concept for mm -hmm. people to yes. pick up and hack. And part of this too, in terms of like having this conversation and all that is, is also to be sharing that. Um, and then anyone who is connected to, uh, has been to a, an event that uh, Aspiration is running, Gunner's running, or if it's a participatory open event, it's very much that shared DNA. Um, and I think we wanna see more yes. of, of those happening around the world and slowly but surely we are conquering that yeah and thanks for for putting that link in there for mp dev also um panelsuck.com is also a um i don't know if you know that but that website will take you to the aspiration facilitation um wiki <laughs> um, um so it gets all that so sarah um uh uh before we get too far along and and too far away like one of the things i i, I wanted to to get at was a little bit more about you um oh. um you know you're uh, I, I have been amazed working with you over the years on MozFest on how accessible and available you are through that and how you also very much the hierarchy not being there and how you're enabling everyone. So I just wanted, uh, could you share a little bit about like what your values are? What, what really motivates you in terms of, of putting this, all this extra work that you do do into MozFest? Um, 
<laughs> uh, great question. Um, I think, well, I always go back to my very first ModsFest. Um, I produced a ModsFest back in 2013 as the production manager. Um, and so I literally was just about the frame. They got me involved three months out. Um, to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what was happening in the kind of session uh, piece of the event. And I was very nervous going to the event that weekend because you know I didn't see myself as a technologist I didn't see myself as you know someone who could code you know I used Firefox but I didn't you know I didn't think this event was for people of my understanding or in my kind of area and that weekend was like you know you can say it was life-changing because um, I was made feel so welcome and um, I never felt that my opinion was out of place and um, there was this great sense of being like you can join conversations be part of sessions and it doesn't matter where you come from or how you see yourself I think it's like how you were involved in that moment in that space you know it's about lifting the community up those that are in this conversation with you and kind of giving each other space to kind of share and converse and I just felt so welcomed and I felt you know so excited to be part of that kind of what I felt was a new community and you know when I walked away I was kind of thinking oh wow what an incredible event what an incredible community it's really really amazing and that was very much designed by Gunnar and Michelle Thorne at the time. And so I was very lucky to be asked to come back and work on the next, um, come back and work on MozFest. And so for me, I always wanted to keep that sense of welcoming, that sense of um, being connected, being welcomed in, sense of opportunity to collaborate there, that kind of, that, that, that the element of community being at the heart of what MozFest is. And that has always kind of motivated me. And, over that weekend, the fact that I was, you know, I met so many people and it wasn't about who they were or what they did, but it was about that kind of conversation that we were in. And I think that was really powerful to me. And I want to kind of model that and continue to, to grow the event and the community in that, in that stream. And I think there's a lot of values as well that I love about, you know, the idea of practicing working open. Um, and the idea of you know the collaboration I always say I am a sum of the collaborations um, of the great people that I've worked with over these years in MozFest and even in my roles beforehand and you know it's really important to um, ensure that I'm consistently representing them and the festival and the people that participate in the festival when I talk about it and so they're the kind of pieces that I want to keep to the core you know about empowering others to be part of the event welcoming others to feel like they have ownership and agency and just making sure that people see that there is a way for them to participate and a way for them to be involved. And I think that shows in so many ways. Like I just love, you know, the, the, the people that come and the people that facilitate and that, you know, there's such a wide range of people that come and do it. And as a result, like they come in um, uh, maybe not so confident and not so like thing, and then they do it and they, they walk away with confidence yeah, I, um, and, and have had something life changing, but also that approach to collaboration, right? Which I think is so critical. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's collaboration, you know, it's at central of what we do when we talk about working open. Um, and you have to kind of acknowledge, like I'm going to acknowledge that like working open is hard. And, um, you know, it means slowing down. It means being open to feedback. It means, you know, sharing documentation with others and being ready for people to give you their opinions. But it's also then, you know, slowing down so others can contribute to the work so the work gets better. It's also slowing down that you can hear other perspectives and you can learn about other people's work and where they're coming from and their opinions so that, that you can learn from that and those relationships. And, you know, holding that is the really important part about collaboration is the joy and the opportunity that that brings to you and to your work and to your community. And I think the other piece, and, and this is the you know, the, a value that like we both, we both share. And one thing I so respect about you is that, um, and, and it's the walking into the room and making like everyone else is, is uh, you are not the most important person in the room, right? When you walk into it and you have that viewpoint, it's like everyone that is in the room is here to contribute and collaborate. And they are very, very important that they are here. Yeah, I think 
you know, I've been extremely lucky to work with this incredible community, to work for this amazing organization and to work with a really powerful team. And I think, you know, when I go into meetings, I never for a second think that I'm going to be the one that's going to provide the solution and going to get us to the end goal. I'm there to see how I can participate and how I can support those people in the room and, and the work. Um, and But always with a, a view of, you know, it's all about learning. You've got to remain curious. You've got to remain open and you've got to be looking for um, understanding that, you know, all these connections, these partnerships, these collaborations, it's all about learning and growth. And that's super important for MozFest as well. Yeah. And just noting, so uh, Mike, uh, and I'm, I might be saying your name wrong. Actually, don't mind. Would you, Mike, would you come off a of mute and maybe ask your question? Yes. Can you Great. hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry for my difficult name. I'm Dutch. So it's me that's having the problem. <laughs> no, I was just wondering. Um, yeah, I'm coordinating a, a platform, a knowledge platform. And so I organize a lot of events. Um, but it's always quite difficult to get people really involved and getting them as far as they can share what they want. So I was just wondering, how do you do that? It's, it's yeah, when the group is sitting and they usually expect, uh, expect people who stand there to tell them mm -hmm. interesting things. And I'm really curious, how can you get that group going? How can you get them involved? Um, it's, it's a great question and, and it's like, it's, it's hard, you know, you know yourself when you're going into a group and you're leading a session, there is all these like expectant eyes like staring at you and it can be, you know, it, you know, it can be hard to start, but I think it is so important to kind of turn the tables and ask them like, what do they want from this session? Why did they come um, to this session? And, and make sure then that there's plenty of space where you're, you know, asking questions of them in the room. And so, you know, providing space for them to connect to each other, to share their experiences and their learnings, it's providing space for them to feed back to the larger group so that there's kind of, it's seen as a level set that everybody in that space is kind of carrying the meeting or the session or the outcome. Um, and Dirk does a lot of work with facilitators around this. Hmm. And, and I think the bit, the magic is trying to get people to understand, um, uh, how to break people down into the small groups mm -hmm. and to make those small groups extra productive. So, um, and, and it's always this thing in terms of the dynamic of understanding that, you know, you get, you, you need to get people into those small groups and like two to three people so that there really is deep engagement very early in your session and then having ways to build that up into back to the larger group. So, you know, that when you are having that small, small group with two or three people, people will really be engaged and that will then carry through as you build the group sizes back up into a large group discussion. Um, and I think the other thing too is that making that super productive. So making sure that you have an output you want to get, like, you know, a list of best practices or, you know, maybe some March, you know, what's going to happen after this? What should we be doing together? but always having that bit of like, you want to bring the group together to actually do something. And that really makes it. Uh, uh, oh, that one. So actually, um, um, Joe, uh, let me ask you to come off of mute and ask that question. That is a super good question. Hello, that's a lot of questions in one. I was a bit cheeky there. Hi, so it's just so interesting. Thank you for taking the time out to do this. Um, yeah, just a bit more details on the sort of process stuff. I'm interested, you get these wranglers together in person, I think, a yeah. sort of retreat thing. Then what happens after that? Like, how are they interacting? How are they making decisions? Is this happening online somewhere? Or are they getting together separately? Uh, and um, then how does that go on to form the actual festival itself? Yeah, you know, that's a great, a great, great question, you know, because our wranglers are from all across the globe, many different time zones. We had a wrangler this year, um, two wranglers from New Zealand. Um, and so trying to coordinate meeting, meeting times is hard. But I think that was the value of the retreat was having this one moment before the event where they could come and connect and get to know each other and build a relationship and also get to share with each other why they're doing this, why they volunteer to work on MozFest and what they hope to get. And so then that, first of all, kind of builds a nice relationship with this group. And so they're on a level playing field. 
We then host um, regular calls um, um, on Zoom once a week where there's where I can share like set calendaring and milestones that we need to achieve. I share a lot about the platforms that we use, like we host and curate on GitHub in the open. And it's a place for them also to raise issues that they have and questions that they have. And also for them to story tell. So there's a lot of space on these calls given for them to, as a group, share how they're getting along, like what, you know, what sessions are really being, are being submitted that exemplified their call for what they were asking for within their um, uh, proposals and within their, their narrative. And we also use this call um, to bring in Wranglers who've been part of the, um, the festival from the previous years. And so we call them our kind of seasoners, seasonal Wranglers. And we bring them to share their kind of processes and activities and how they worked um, each year. Because while I give a frame, I give an ending or an end result where we need to go, I don't, I try not to tell the Wranglers how they should curate what they should choose. I want to be able for them to, um, as a group, kind of design their own um, space, how it looks, how people would interact, and what sessions are going to be there. And so ultimately my role is to try support them and give them the tools and the resources that they need in these calls. And we, they take place once a week all the way to MozFest. And then we bring people in um, a couple of days before the event, and we have and bring them in again, sitting around in a circle, everyone starts to put faces back to what voices sound like. Um, and then just kind of like celebrate the fact that we've been on this journey together and that the work that's been done is gonna carry through for the weekend. The facilitators are basically gonna be carrying the festival over the weekend. And then like just look and how we can continue to support each other over that weekend and like just turning up for each other and you know at events or you know, helping with certain areas. And it is really, really relationship building. Um, they, they, none of, some of them have never met or never been to MozFest. Some of them um, would know each other, maybe through the network, but a lot of them, you know, choose their own space they want to design under. And as a team, they design their team together. And so the, the roles that they take, they decide. As I said, the narrative they decide and they choose the sessions and they choose how they, you know, the kind of what kind of emails they're going to send their facilitators, what design is going to be evoked in the weekend. And so it's very much in their hands. Um, so I'm just looking at your question. So is there some online voting debates and commonsy stuff going on before the festival? Um, not so before the festival, again, like the Wranglers only come on, on in May. And so they really, we have, it's kind of, it's a, quick fast paced month to get together to design a narrative and put it on the website but once we have the open call open we still have lots of time for us to kind of learn how to work together and learn what we're trying to do and what the design process will be before we have to choose the sessions and so those june july are critical times for us and that is done decentralized across zoom in some documents, some ether pads, um, and Slack. We use Slack for is a is a great tool for conversing. Yeah, and I have to. I mean, just just the other thing to add on to that is the incredible amount of um, appreciation and support that um, that Sarah does do for all the Wranglers. And I think that's the bit in terms of like if you are wanting to do a sort of, uh, you know, having a, a small army of people that are part of this federated design. It's just so critical just to be appreciative mm -hmm. um, and open to any questions, to any problems that they're having, to any challenges. Um, and I think that this is a bit too, like Wranglers have different amounts of experience. So there's often a brand new Wranglers that are coming in and have no idea what um you know what they're in for and what they're getting through and having this like so well laid out in terms of you know here's what needs here's what's going to be happening over the next couple of months but then it being able to answer just any question that comes up no matter like how trivial or whatever it seems is really an important mind frame i think that I, I know you have that's and I, yeah. and I think like I don't have to be the one to answer all those questions you know what is wonderful about this Ranger group is they are a support network for each other and so you will often see they you know 
will be will be responding to each other in the slack channels or in emails and sharing and helping each other and so and we're very lucky that our wranglers who participated in previous events always come back to support the next cohorts always want to stay connected and always want to stay involved and and that's so appreciative because then that kind of knowledge keeps going and again deepening those collaborations great so listen, we're, we're at five to the hour. I'm going to just take this one last question from Barbara. So Barbara, if you want to come off mute and ask, ask your question, please do. Sure, thanks. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, you mentioned the, the feedback wall, but I was wondering also like what other ways you use to, to take the content that's being created um, forward? Like, is there like collaborative note taking or any such thing? Um, I'll be the first to admit that this is an area that we still kind of struggle um, on how to really support. And so we do ask everyone, so all our sessions are submitted via GitHub and you can see all those submissions, they're still there. Um, and we ask people to put as much content that they're comfortable sharing in a kind of an open forum there. And um, then when people, when we run the sessions over the weekend, we ask people to make sure you're taking notes. Make sure that as soon as you open the session that you have someone who's gonna be able to take collaborative notes and make sure the people that are in that session know where those notes are. Um, and we ask them then to kind of share those notes in the kind of schedule app. Um, and as some people do it in various degrees. Some people are really great and the note taking is absolutely incredible and it lives on. And then it's some people are just shared within the group that are there and so we're really trying to get better that more sessions have more open and accessible notes that you can take afterwards that anybody can see even if you haven't been at the event I think that's really important is like there's an opportunity for other people to participate and um, some sessions um, the, due to the building, the Wi-Fi is not incredible, and it's a very open structure. You can see across all the floors, there's no rooms. Every session is run around a table, um, which makes it kind of the sound um, no, can be quite noisy. Um, but we do do our best to try and um, record, ask people to blog afterwards, and then we kind of retweet everything on Twitter, and then for people to share their notes there. And we have a, a platform ourselves called Network Pulse. Um, in Mozilla, so if you search for Mozilla Network Pulse, and um, people upload sessions and um, blogs and um, live recordings of sessions there. And just, I think it's fair to say we are learning. Oh yeah. So we are learning has, <laughs> like, about this note taking, but <laughs> yeah, this is a, it's something, that, but something we wanna, definitely try to crack this year for the, the 10th anniversary. Um, Sarah, just a final, like, you know, I know um, everyone here is, is uh, gotten a lot of um, information about MozFest. How can people get involved uh, in MozFest? Um, well, I think that we're, where we are at the very, very start of the year, um, not a lot is happening on our website. So I kind of really encourage you to follow our Twitter handle at Mozilla Festival. Um, if you want to get involved, please submit a session. We'll open our call on the 1st of June. And so you can submit a session around your work or projects that you're doing, or even bring you know, your own event structure to the, event, to the session, ask people to help you. How do I make this more collaborative? How do I open up this documenting process? Um, how can I get more people involved or how can I change the disciplines here? Um, and then also you can just arrive as an attendee. The event will be in London. Um, we show our dialogue and debates online. Um, remote participation is something that we're working very hard on getting better. And so the website, once it gets up and running, will be a way for people to um, stay connected. And also just to say there, there are, for, uh, there are a limited number of travel stipends that are yeah. available for people as well, um, but limited. Um, yeah, so we probably have about, I'll be I'll, in honesty and open, we probably have about 120 stipends that we can offer, but we have usually 400 people requesting stipends. So it's that in itself is a challenge, but yeah. But we can help you and, you know, give you tools and kind of documentation if you seek to find your own funding through work or through other means. Great. So we are, are just hitting the top of the hour. So I just have to do, uh, uh, thank you everyone for showing up today and participating, uh, uh, listening to us and unpacking everything that is MozFest. You can tell it is something, I mean, we're, it's, Sarah is deeply passionate about, I'm deeply passionate about, but there are so many people that have been these 2000 that come every year that are deeply uh, passionate about it. So it's 
been really great that you guys have spent the time with us to hear about that and listen to our passions. Um, just want to point out that I do, we hold these online discussions monthly. So if you yourself are working on a network centric resource and want to share your challenges uh, and lessons learned by guesting on an upcoming online discussion, please get in touch with me. Um, also, if you are not part of our network on network centric resources, you can join up by going to fabwriters.net forward slash metric hyphen centric. Um, and so I got to say big thanks um, to you, Sarah, just for taking the time and all the prep. Really Thank you for inviting me. This is really great. Great questions. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, really great. And thank you, everyone. And sticking with us. Um, also, just got to do a shout out, shout out. Our next online discussion is going to be next month, Wednesday, February 20th at 4 o'clock, when we'll be joined by Greg, Greg Bloom of Open Referral, who has used a community organizing model to create an open standard for sharing data about services and resources for people in need. Um, so I'll, I'll be putting stuff out about then, but just to say thank you so much. Thanks for coming. I hope to see you then. We will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Dirk. Thanks Bye. for having me. Thanks. Bye. Bye.